the old DVDs. Let's watch the Blu-ray. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode two of my new series Defending a Dud. Yes, this series here where I take a look at a film which is um, hated amongst the film community people. A film that would have been bashed to pieces upon release, um, critically uh, derived uh, and I'm going to try and defend it for you. I'm going to take a look at said film and see if there's any worth in that film. Um, so today, Speed 2 Cruise Control. Let's see if I can find any worth. Who is running the ship? Oh yeah, I am. A position charges throughout the ship. Where is he? He's everywhere. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so welcome back to the channel, everyone. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider hitting the subscribe button, coming and joining the channel. Um, this series here, um, I do need a bit of participation from yourselves in that I need some titles that I can go and look at. I did get a few at the end of my episode one. My episode one, I did look at Ghostbusters 2016. I'll link that video below if you wanna go and watch that. And I failed miserably in defending it. Yes, I did. Um, best start to the series? Not really, as I got nowhere. But anyway, so today, Speed 2, Cruise Control. But I will say, also, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you three options. Three options, a um, couple of choices by other viewers, um, and a choice of my own, that I want you to let me know in the comments which one you'd like me to do for the next episode, and I'll round up who said what and whoever gets the most hits for that title is the title I'll do for my next episode. So here we have Speed 2. This film is from 1997, directed by Jeanne de Bont, stars Sandra Bullock and Jason Patrick, who you may know from The Lost Boys. Yes, so I watched this. This is my Blu-ray copy. Um, yes, I do own it on Blu-ray. And I'm gonna, well, I have put it in, I've watched it. And I'm gonna try and defend it for you. Um, now this means me trying to leave out any bias I have for the film, trying to set aside any hatred I have and go in with blind eyes and look at it and, and try and think of a way and a defence for this movie and this movie's existence. Um, now at the moment, this film on Rotten Tomatoes is currently sat at this. Wow. Wow, I didn't realise it was this low. Well, critic 4% score, an audience 16% score. I've got my work cut out for me. That is horrendous. That's a horrendous score. And I don't know what to do with that. Oh, oh you're back again. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to make up for last week. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Kent, but that bus was going way too fast. So anyway... Um, we're going to have to break this film down. I'm going to have to break this film apart before building it back up. Um, this isn't necessarily how I will do every video because each film will be taken as its own and I'll see what I can do with it. So, obviously, um, screenwriter Graham Yost wrote the script for, um, or the screenplay for Speed and we got the film in 1994, the first Speed film directed by Jeanne de Bont. Now this film here on its own was originally conceived as a one and done. Um, Jeanne de Bont said it was a one and done film, there's no potential of a sequel. Um, ironically. Now Speed, you've got to understand, came at us on the back of that Die Hard era of movies. In 1988 when Die Hard was released, this laid the groundwork for um, future action blockbusters. This paved the way. It was, it was an industry defining film. It changed the way action, the action genre was approached. And Speed is a byproduct of that. It is essentially a Die Hard on a bus kind of scenario. Yes, and the film done wonderful. It done brilliant at the box office, starring Keanu Reeves. It wasn't yet overly well known. Um, Sandra Bullock was introduced. We got, you know, she had she wasn't big in film at that point. Dennis Hopper starred, who was a name, and a wonderful film, a very tense, taut film 
was given to us. And then, about a week after this film opened, 20th Century Fox wanted to move ahead with a sequel because this film made so much money. We now wanted a sequel. They wanted a sequel. And thus, Speed 2 was born. Now, Jean de Bont did come back on board as director and with a script of his own. He had his own idea, even though he said it was a one and done film, he ended up having his own idea for a movie. That being said, other scripts were flown, um, flown about, I was going to say, which is quite ironic, thrown about, because one of the scripts was actually set on board a plane. A plane that's altitude couldn't go above a certain height at the point while they're flying over. Maybe something like the Himalayas, but it's a mountain range. Um, so you've got the mountains, you can't go above a certain height. There was that idea for a film. But what we totally landed on was a movie now set on board a luxury cruise liner. Quite a small luxury cruise liner, um, but nonetheless a luxury cruise liner. Now, as we know, boats can't go very fast. Now, that's just the nature of boats. Speed boats can because they sit above the water. They're above. But a cruise ship and cruise liners, they have... Um, they, f they have a, a, an imposing force against them, which is the water. So ships can't go very fast. So you're onto a loser straight away, aren't you? Yes, you are. And, and this was the biggest <laughs> mistake that this film made, or the biggest, it's not, no, not so much a mistake, but this is the biggest um, thing that, th that, that this film had against it. That, hold on, when you're setting it on board a boat, big open space, nothing in its way. <laughs> you see where we're going with this. Now, Interestingly, Keanu Reeves wasn't happy with the script and thusly moved on to film, I believe it was The Devil's Advocate at the time, and they needed a replacement. And they found that in Jason Patrick, the actor who I said appeared in The Lost Boys, um, among other things, but primarily I know him from The Lost Boys. Um, now, Jason Patrick, um, he's not bad, I don't mind him, but this meant a rework into the script of the film. Yes, yeah, so the script was reworked, but ironically, being that it was set on board a cruise ship, it actually took from elements of a script that had been produced for Die Hard 3. Yes, originally Die Hard 3 was going to be based upon a ship until Under Siege came along, another Die Hard ripoff, and thusly Die Hard couldn't be set aboard a ship and that's when Die Hard changed its modus operandi in that it, it now became an open city set action flick um, and I'll come back to that so we were given Speed 2 set on board a ship with an inflated budget of somewhere between 160 million to 200 million dollars massive amount of money and a lot of the film was set upon a real ship it was filmed upon a real ship that they hired for the filming of it and the film did have massive sets built for it and they did have a, a, a city a town a seaside town set built and they did drive a ship into it in that they built a front part of a ship that was on the rails that went into the water and came out and crashed into this um, this this mock-up city this mock-up more well, mock-up town I should say it's not a city so anyway where does this film let's let's have a look at where this film falls down obviously the film falls down in the casting department because Keanu Reeves didn't return and over time this has sort of um, plagued this movie more and more because at the time Keanu Reeves was a you know he was a relatively new actor on the scene he wasn't massive but now ever since you've got the likes of John Wick and all this um, Keanu Reeves his stock has increased Matrix as well obviously his stock has gone up and that in turn in people's minds in the psyche makes this film even less and less of a, a, a decent film because no Keanu Reeves all right um, if Keanu, Keanu Reeves had vanished off of the face of the earth after you know uh, Speed 2 came out or something like that there may be an elevation of this film in the psyche because Keanu Reeves isn't that person that he is today that is beloved by everyone and so you've got that element to it okay that, that's carried on now the other biggest mistake that this film made was the script yes the script now keep with me on this one the fact that it was set on a boat now this film had a certain um, uh, uh, 
a, a certain base, home base to it, shall we say. Let's say, Die Hard. Die Hard, right, is a single man in a building. Die Hard 2, a man alone in an airport. Now, Die Hard 2 got criticised a bit because it was essentially a carbon copy of um, Die Hard 1. But it needed to be. It needed to be. It needed to retain that, that thing that made Die Hard Die Hard. Now, Speed needed for a sequel to retain that thing that made it Speed before moving on to something else. So, in my mind, this film here would work better as a third film in the Speed franchise than a second film because it let go of that speed formula. The speed formula in the second one doesn't exist apart from at the very end of the film when the boat is um, going at top knots towards the town or towards the uh, the, the um, oil tanker. That's the only element of the film where speed, the speed formula comes into play. The rest is just a, a, a formulaic action movie. Now, had Die Hard 3 come out as Die Hard 2 um, and let go of the Die Hard formula at that juncture before a second film was done, it would have been heavily criticised because it's not a Die Hard, it would have just been another formulaic action movie, although Die Hard 3 is a fantastic film. Same thing applies here. This film plays more like a third film in the franchise where they could have played loose with the speed formula and set it upon a boat and... and no one would have been none the wiser, really, or, or really cared too much. It needed a second film that played with the exact same formula as the first film, even if it came across as a carbon copy version. Obviously, the non-inclusion of Keanu Reeves was a huge, huge loss to this movie. However, Sandra Bullock did choose Jason Patrick as her co-star for this film that that was her choice um she'd always wanted to work with him after seeing him in some other projects that i can't think off the top of my head now when kiana didn't step into the film because the film was written for him they changed it up but they changed it so much up so much that they made um the character of alex um uh, sandra bullock's boyfriend um come a uh, fiance within the film um, was now a carbon copy of the... Sorry, his name isn't Alex, is it? I said Alex. Alex Shaw, sure, yes. Sorry, yeah. Um, so he's a carbon copy of that Keanu Reeves character. It's essentially a recast, and let's just change the name, because he's in the same line of work. He does the same sort of um, silly, crazy action type of stuff. So that's got the, what the film's got against it. So... We've had to deconstruct this film. We've had to look into the fact that it doesn't play as a as a sequel. It play, play probably play better as a third film and be more accepting as a third film in the franchise. Um, and this all goes into the psyche of the person and what your expectation from a film and what this film gives you. Now, this film here, like I said, was written by Jean de Bont, um, with Randall McCormick also writing. Um, William Defoe joined as as the villain Geiger, and in doing so, gave us some really bad writing. All the stuff about the leeches and this sort of a thing. That's just like, you know, it's a very villainous kind of setup, isn't it? You know, um, and the film also starred Tamara Morrison. Yes, Boba Fett. Um, music was done by Mark Mancina, who returned. Um, who did work on a first speed film and also worked on films like Con Air and, and a wealth of other musical scores. Now, can I defend this film? Can I find anything of worth with it? Okay, so I've had to go in and this is how you got, you got to watch this film as a, don't watch it as a sequel to speed, right? You've got to get speed out of your mind first off, right? Just take this as a, an, an action movie. Yeah, this film's rated PG, and that's something I'll be talking about as well. So, as an action film, does this film work? As a standalone action film, if if let's look at it in the case of if Sandra Bullock wasn't in it as the same character from Speed, uh, and we just had an, a boat set action film, um, I believe that this film would work, right? Um, the film didn't bore me, but it's got issues. It's got 
huge issues. Um, the characters are not overly well written. However, there are some enjoyable moments with them. Jason Patrick, I liked his performance in the film. I thought he was fantastic. Um, I had no issue with him whatsoever. He isn't a Keanu Reeves. No, he isn't. But with the with what he had to work with, it was great. Um, there are some fantastic... I mean, Sandra Bullock. I can't knock Sandra Bullock in this film. She delivers. She delivers. It's, it's, she doesn't give a bad performance. She looks fantastic. Um, probably the best she looks on screen, I must say. Um, you know, this is when she was at her height of fame. Um... I don't think I ever went away, did it? But, you know, she, she, she looks great. Her performance was great. She gets some very subtle nuances in her performance as this character um, that just, you know, endear you to her. Um, back to the character of, of Alex, Jason Patrick, the inclusion of the fact that he can, you know, he's got this relationship with a young girl in it and using sign language. Um, I think that's a very strong moment in the film um, when he's talking to her across the tables and then he has to go and rescue her. Um, I think that's great. The motivation of Geiger, William Defoe, doesn't necessarily work too much for me. The bit where he's he's threatening the boat captain and then throws, you know, knocks the boat captain over the edge of the over the edge of the ship because he's the designer because Geiger's the designer of all the system on board, the automated system and all this. And he got fired for whatever reason and all this nonsense. And, and the captain comes out and, you know, should the captain know who he is? Of course not. Of course not. You know, um, why would he? Why, why would he? You know, is, is an astronaut on board a, a, a spacecraft or a space shuttle know everyone that worked on board, the, you know, the guidance system? They wouldn't do. Why would you? Um, so that bit is, is, is quite a weak. Although William Defoe gives a decent performance, sort of hamming it up, running around. Tamara Morrison is enjoyable in the film. Now, as for action set pieces in this movie. Um, okay, so we have the action set piece where people are um, departing the ship in the lifeboats. And um, the lifeboat sort of starts hanging. It doesn't work and... Uh, the cat Jason Patrick character has to jump onto the lifeboat. All that very good, very very good. Nothing wrong with that action set piece whatsoever. The action set piece where he has to go into the ship into the, as it's flooded, um, swimming through to open the or to move the things that will move the ship and this sort of a thing as the ship's approaching the um, oil tanker. Again, that's fine. That's a fine action set piece. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And it looks incredible. Same as when he goes down to rescue the girl um, who's deaf. Sign language girl. Um, again, nothing wrong with this action set piece. At the end of the film, we are given an action set piece where, like I discussed before, where the boat crashes into this small town. And um, again, it looks good. You know, that's where the budget is all up on the screen. The film looks fantastic for the most part. That looks good. And then you've got the action set piece. These are not in order where Alex goes underneath the ship to, to put the wire, the big cable, into the into the um, turbines, into the, you know, the, the words eluding me. <laughs> the big, uh, I don't know, Christ, my mind's gone blank. Anyway, you know what I mean. All right, so... As action set pieces go, these are all action set pieces that work, right? They don't not work. They're interesting, they're fun, they're good, right? They're not speed. That's the problem. They're not speed for the most part, right? So, um, I think that all, all negativity aside, um, if you go into this film as not watching it as a speed sequel... You see it as an action film, it works. Um, I don't think the cast doesn't work. I think that if you go in with the mindset it's not Keanu Reeves, you're going to have a problem. Yes, some of the dialogue's clanky, of course it is, but the money's all there on the screen. It's a big budget action set piece. However, it's not a, an offensive film. There's no violence in this film. There's no real blood in this film. Um, that may be another factor in why people 
don't particularly like it. However, if I had young children who wanted to get into the action genre, Speed 2 would be a film that I may well show them. Because, like I said, very inoffensive film. Um, it is action. Not many people die or anything like this. There's no blood. Um, um, so it's a good introduction to um, the action genre. Now, I quite enjoyed the watch of this film. Um, for what it is. For what it is. Remember, I'm not comparing this to Speed 1. Comparisons all aside, Speed 1 is a fantastic film. Speed 1 knocks this out of the water. No pun intended. Um, but as a film, it works. It works. I just think it, 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 it came out at the wrong time. It done the wrong thing for a sequel. It was plagued by the fact that certain cast members didn't want to return and this played very much into the psyche of it's a poor film um, and, and a lot of people do tend to jump onto certain bandwagons rather than making a, a, a mind of up of their own because you know it's a lot harder to do that to step away from seeing what a film should have been and could have been to what the film actually is um, so for me my dispense of this film lies in the fact that it can work as a standalone movie, effectively so. Um, it can be utilised um, to introduce younger audience members into the action genre without any fear of um, language, nudity, violence. Um, the film looks fantastic on the big screen. Um, and the action set pieces, for the most part, generally work. Um, clunky dialogue aside, there we go. So, I'm going to leave you there. Give me your thoughts on this and whether you think my defence of this film actually worked or not. Um, and yeah, so we've got to delve in now into some um, something for my next episode. Um, now... Let me have a look back at some of the titles that were given to me. On vacation. I was going to surprise you tonight, but uh, it's a cruise. Caribbean. Okay, so I've had a look through um, my messages. So I, my plan is, is I will work through hopefully every film that's given to me. Um, so here's a few ideas. Well, actually, these are the three that I'm going to put up for my next um episode so first up we have jacob martin um requested among others batman and robin so we'll get to the others jacob that, that's been suggested um so batman and robin okay we know that one um jesse aston the postman yes the kevin costner movie the postman um and also i will go with big paulie big paulie bowman um and that is Battlefield Earth. Yes, the John Travolta movie. Um, the Scientology type of movie. Which, uh, I'd have to source that one. But there we go, that's no issue. Pound in Poundland, that one is. Because I've already looked. Um, so there we go, there's the three. So let me know in the comments down below what one of these three you'd like me to do as the next episode. And whatever one gets the most hits is the one I'll go with. And at the end of that episode, I'll give the few more um, <coughs> also let me know of any other ideas for these films I've got a comprehensive list um, from people which is fantastic and I'll work my way through all of them so this is AJ thank you for watching um, um, hope to see you on the next one please hit the subscribe button come and join the channel and um, let's talk film down below let me know your thoughts on speed 2 why not see you all soon take care and goodbye